This is a follow-up video on how to use a combination of timer circuits as a means of temperature control for a soldering iron without a built-in temperature sensor. In the previous video, the components were mounted on a test board. In this video, all the parts have been mounted into a compact enclosure and a more improved delay timer circuit has been obtained. The soldering iron used in this video is a 110 volt unit with a ceramic heating element. Although this soldering iron has a temperature adjustment dial, it works like a dimmer control and is not easy to set to a specific temperature. The target temperature I will try to achieve in this video will be 343 degrees Celsius. That's 650 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason I chose this temperature is because it works well for me with a similar soldering iron on a Hako FX 888D soldering station. Even though the adjustment dial on this soldering iron can be set as low as 200 degrees, it is not possible to achieve 343 degrees because the actual temperature at the lowest setting is greater than 343 degrees. A temperature controlled soldering station uses a soldering iron with a built-in temperature sensor. The controller will send electrical impulses to the soldering iron at full power. The frequency and duration of these impulses depends on the temperature of the sensor. The idea of using a timer circuit as a means of temperature control for a soldering iron was to mimic the way a soldering station pulses power to a soldering iron with a built-in temperature sensor. Instead of sending power to the soldering iron based on the temperature, this unit sends power in precisely timed pulses. The following illustration shows how the unit works. A 12 volt DC supply powers the cycle timer and delay timer circuits. Relays in the timer circuit send AC power to an outlet that the soldering iron is plugged into. The delay timer is only on during a cold start and shuts off after a short time. The cycle timer continues to pulse the power on and off to regulate the temperature. This is the soldering iron I will use in the demonstration. Turn up the dial all the way before starting. The front surface has all the switches. On this side is the cycle timer. On this side is the delay timer. At the rear is the power cord and the fuse. The base is secured with plastic fasteners. The AC outlet has an LED that lights up when it is powered. The power cord will be plugged into a power strip. This is the main power switch with a standby LED. Both timer circuits are powered. These are the buttons for setting the cycle timer on and off times. The unit is set for function number 15. 5 seconds off and 1.7 seconds on. The delay timer has two buttons. The left button selects the digit. The right button increases the number by one each time it is pressed. Pressing the reset button starts the cycle timer. The LED on the outlet indicates it is powered. An LED also lights up on the cycle timer. Pressing the delay timer reset switch activates the cold start countdown. The 
The LED on the outlet shows that it is powered during the cold start. In this case, 36 seconds. The outlet is powered while the countdown continues. The LED goes out when the delay timer shuts off and lights up for each pulse of the cycle timer. The main switch powers down the unit. The unit is switched on. The delay timer reset switch is pressed first, followed by the cycle timer reset switch. I'll monitor the tip temperature during the demonstration. The LED on the AC outlet indicates that the delay timer is sending full power to the unit until it shuts off. The LED on the AC outlet shuts off around 288 degrees. Knowing this becomes useful when doing a warm start. The temperature continues to rise but starts to slow down after a few seconds. As the cycle timer continues to pulse power on and off, the temperature begins to settle. The unit doesn't hit the target temperature of 343 degrees, but comes pretty close. A quick check of the tip temperature shows that a cold start would make the soldering iron too hot, so we'll need to do a warm start. The unit is switched on. The cycle timer reset switch is already on and the circuit starts to pulse power to the outlet. The warm start switch is held down while the soldering iron heats up. When the temperature reaches around 280 degrees, the warm start switch is released. I probably should have held it a little while longer. From this point, the temperature continues to rise for a short time, then settles. In real-world use, the tip thermometer is needed for a warm start, but it should not be necessary for constant monitoring. I still didn't hit the target temperature of 343 degrees, but it was pretty close.